Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from AnthonyMorganti.com and this is episode 20 of Learn Lightroom 5. And in this episode, we're going to create an HDR image using Lightroom and Photoshop. In the previous episode, episode 19, we created a panorama using um, Lightroom and Photoshop. And the reason why I'm doing this uh, is I've had a lot of requests to demonstrate plugins with Lightroom. And two of the most popular things to do are create panoramas in HDR so that's why I'm starting with those and I'm doing it um, in in this one in Photoshop but I have there's a lot of different programs that will create HDR um, photographs and I think I have Nick I have some other ones so in this episode I'm going to use Photoshop and in succeeding episodes I'll use some of the other plugins I have to demonstrate how they do in HDR and maybe then we'll compare some images too Anyways, if you're not familiar with what HDR is, it's high, high dynamic range. And all that means is that the very darkest parts of the photo will be represented as well as the very lightest parts of the photo. And they'll all be represented in the same image. Typically, when you do a single exposure, you can't expose for the darkest darks and the lightest lights. You just can't. You have to do something more in the middle. Well, that's where HDR comes along and you use software such as Photoshop will merge all these different images together to create the high dynamic range image. Now, in this case, I took seven different shots. This one I consider roughly in the middle. And then three stops more open is this one and three stops more closed is this one. So I have this one is the correct exposure and one stop closed down, two stops closed down, three stops closed down, and similarly going the other way to open. So what I'm going to do, and what I typically do, is I'll take the first image in Lightroom, and I don't do barely anything as far as adjustments. I boost clarity, okay, and I don't even add contrast or anything else. I close down the basic panel. Then I go to Lens Corrections and I enable Profile Corrections. That's all I do. Now, I want to do those exact same settings to all of these. And an easier way than going to, through each one and doing it individually is you hold the Shift key down and make sure that first one that you just did is clicked first. Then hold the Shift key down and click the last one. That selects all of them. And then click Sync over here on the right panel and it's going to ask you what you want to sync and I'm going to say none. You could do all of them since we only really did two adjustments but we did clarity and we did lens profile corrections. Okay, so those two, clarity and lens profile corrections. We're going to synchronize those. Okay, that already is synced right across. Now these still should be selected. If they're not, do it again by clicking on the first one, holding the shift key down, clicking on the last one. Right click on any of them and you're going to go up to edit in and then down to the bottom here is merge to, H merge to HDR Pro in Photoshop. We're going to click that. Now what that will do, it's going to take these seven images and bring them over to Photoshop and it's going to do kind of a pre-merge. Now, in doing, I tried this out before I started recording, and I noticed in Photoshop CC, I have a real bizarre problem in the preview. The preview comes out like disjointed. So, I still have CS6, Photoshop CS6 on my computer. So, I ran it in Photoshop CS6 and it works fine. So it must be something that's not quite right with uh, Photoshop CC. And if anyone knows what could be wrong, because I searched the internet trying to see what you know it could be, and, and apparently no one has this problem but me. Um, but it's really not a big deal because it doesn't really affect the final image, and you'll see in a minute. And I can't do this episode in yeah, well, I could, but I. But I'm using Lightroom to start, then go into CC. And when I when I installed Photoshop CC, it took the preset or not the preset. It took the um, plugin away for Photoshop CS6. It's not in Lightroom anymore. Well, anyway, this is what I'm talking about. You see this this white line here? For some reason, it split my image, and I'm not really sure why. So if anyone knows why 
email me and let me know at Tony at AnthonyMorganti.com. I'd appreciate it. Or get me on Twitter at, at AnthonyMorganti. I'd appreciate it. Okay, so what this is, these, this is previews. And no matter what you select down here, it won't matter. It's not going to affect the final image or anything like that. These are just the seven images down here that we um, brought over from Lightroom. And you could, they're all checked, so that means they're all going to be included in the HDR merge. So if you don't want one, you decide that it's too bright or something, you could take the bright one out or, or something. But I'm going to leave them all checked. It's really not of a big deal. Right at the top, you have custom, and we'll get to that in a minute. Um, Right here is remove ghost, and this is handy if you did an HDR outside and the wind might have been blowing slightly and it might have uh, moved some trees or something like that. So if, if that is the case, click on remove ghosts. The next important thing is the mode. You have three different, you have 16-bit, 8-bit, or 32-bit. Almost everyone who does a normal HDR will keep it in 16-bit. 8-bit's just going to reduce the quality of the image. 32-bit, you will you won't get much you'll be able to do. You're just going to be doing some toning. And what it does do, though, it, it makes a really humongous HDR image that you could do tons of processing in in Lightroom with. And I actually am going to do an episode where I do 32-bit HDR to show you what I mean because it's really super powerful but in this episode I'm not going to do that I'm just going to show you like a normal HDR and what I mean by normal is the um, when you get up into these presets here you've seen try bear with my my preview here it's like surrealistic you see what I mean this is what most people consider normal HDR to be these kind of weird like really you know kind of um, art looking shots and if you're in 32-bit mode you won't be able to do those 32-bit mode is good though if you want to do a normal photograph but you want to include some of the uh, stuff that's really deep in the shadows you want to get it into the image and some of the stuff that's really in the highlights that you want to get in the image and that's what you'd use 32-bit mode for and we are going to be doing that in a future episode now this uh, adaptation um, local adaptation is what we're doing here. We could adjust all these sliders to make it what we want. The um, equalized histogram and stuff is just kind of um, like making the image do, like equalizing the histogram. Basically, we were flattening out, we're merging the, all the, the images and we're making it flat and there's no adjustments to be made and that's what each of these do this one we we're just going to ex, um, adjust exposure and gamma and that's exposure makes it lighter and darker and gamma is gonna it's kinda like contrast you're you're taking away or adding contrast to the image so that's what that is and highlight compression is you're you're basically bringing out any hot spots in the photograph. Now that's to keep in mind. A lot of times, maybe you take a landscape and you have a very bright sky, and you want to try to get rid of it. You could merge a couple different images, bring it into here, and do highlight compression, and that would help bring that down. But we're going to go with local adaptation because this is the um, the HDR that everyone's kind of familiar with. At least that's what I think. Now up in the presets. Um, you could do a custom preset um, and you could adjust these sliders um, or you know the way you want and what gamma is does before what I mentioned it's kind of it's hard to explain it's kinda like a contrast so you could move that around and try to see you know get different looks exposure of course is making it brighter and darker the detail is kind of like clarity but it uses color too so it brings out more detail and brings out the color a little more um, shadow highlights vibrant saturation that's almost exactly like what's in Lightroom so you can mess with those too um, I think I'm just gonna go for a preset in this one and this one's Scott 5 that's um, Scott Kelby who's an awesome photographer and he's an awesome awesome teacher. If you ever go to uh, kelbytraining.com, check that out. Um, Scott Kelby's really a, seems like a nice guy too, although I don't know him personally. Um, he's He just, you know, seems like he um, 
he really wants to help people with their photography. RC5 is a guy that works for Scott Kelby, that's RC Concepcion, and he's he's a great photographer in his own right too. But we're going to skip uh, s keep with uh, Scott 5. Now, <laughs> I'm assuming that's Scott Kelby, I could be wrong. Um, anyways, so it what it did was that preset just adjusts these sliders to you know what the Scott Kelby you know did here um, you know for his preset the other thing you could do is up here these little like um, fly out menus you could load presets so you could get presets off the internet or you could save a preset as your own so if you if you just you start sliding these sliders around and you like that effect you, you could save the preset so you don't have to try to come back and move all these sliders exactly the same way. We covered presets in Lightroom, so it's very similar. It, it'll save you some time so you could save the preset. And this um, fly out here is about the response curve is how it works the image, I guess, how it um, processes the image. Just leave it on auto response curve. That um, does it you know though you know automatically if you have one if someone on the internet gives you one or something and you could load it in there maybe it'll process the image more to your liking and um, but I'm just gonna leave it like it is and when you you decided on the HDR you know look you want you either chose a preset or you adjusted these sliders just click OK now um, this is where Photoshop comes in and it starts actually merging the fi files. One thing I should add, a lot of times this preset, hopefully your preset doesn't have this big white bar going through it, it's not going to look exactly like what you're going to end up with. And a lot of people complain sometimes it looks dramatically different than what you end up with. And there really is no way around that. That's just It's been doing that since I've been messing around with, um, with uh, you know, this HDR stuff. Okay, the, now we're in Photoshop, and I'm going to zoom in. As you can see, if you look, I mean, is that cruddy or what? But you could see all the way to the back and all the detail. It's just absolutely incredible. Now, you could um, you do some adjustments here if you wanted. Um, I'm not going to do any Photoshop adjustments. I'm um, way to do it is you could save it, then quit Photoshop. A shortcut. I mean, don't be afraid. Just quit Photoshop. It's going to ask you to save it or not. Yeah, click save. And then what it does, it saves it and goes right into Lightroom. And now this is the photo in Lightroom. Now I want to bring you back. This is the middle exposure that I did of this scene. And this is the HDR. And as you can see, the difference, all this detail back here. I zoom in. And you could see, look at all this disgusting crud up in here. I mean, is this cool or what? And all the detail. Now, if I go back to this image, it's just you can't even see back there, right? That's the 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 uh, exposure that was in the middle. I go to the brightest one, and you could see back there. It's not very clear, but you could see back there. And uh, we go back to this guy here, and it's just something. I mean, that is just so cool. Um, so, oops. So then what you could do, now you could process the image. You could go into your basic panel, and I think I want to bring out back in here a little more. So I'm going to bring the shadows out a, a bit, like maybe around 66. Now the highlights I like, I'm not going to mess with the highlights at all. Um, I'm not going to adjust the white point. Um, you'll probably see it's pretty much probably bang on. See, as I, I didn't even move it and see how we have some of the whites coming through so that's fine uh, the blacks um, I could increase the contrast a little by turning the blacks down making the blacks a little darker like that so that made it a little more contrasty we could add a little more contrast here we could add some clarity not that it needs any more clarity it's pretty darn clear and if you want to get really crazy with the vibrance add a little vibrance um, pretty much you don't have to do a ton of processing in Lightroom after you brought it over into Photoshop and did the HDR merge um, because that preset we picked Scott 5 did most of the work for us here as far as processing it and getting the highlights and shadows the way we wanted them um, 
the detail panel I don't think we even really have to mess around much with this I mean it's just crystal clear um, but if you want I mean you can do that you know quick and dirty sharpening that I always talk about bring it up into the 70s um, bring noise reduction around 40 and um, if you want to do a vignette um, like I often do you could do a vignette I don't think I want one on this one though and um, bring it I'm gonna zoom out just a little bit there we go and um, a lot of times you know you could check around with camera calibration which I did in um, previous episodes oh it's embedded now see oh that's something I would bring up because I've got emails now and then when I'm on a raw file let's go over to a raw file this one and I go to profile see all these different profiles now this is because I shoot Nikon and this is the profiles I'll get if you shoot Canon you'll get different different uh, options here if you shoot Fuji uh, um, Optimus anything you're gonna get your own set of profiles but you notice in this image now because it's now a TIFF image created in, in Photoshop it's embedded mean the profiles in it I can't change it and if you shoot JPEGs you don't shoot raw your profile will be embedded your camera already put a profile in there and you can't change it so that's why you can't change your profile a lot of people email me and say um, I've had at least I'm not exaggerating probably four or five emails where people said that in their profile they can't change and that's because they're shooting JPEG so shoot raw uh, everyone best you can so I think that's it for um, HDR Pro uh, merged to HDR Pro in Photoshop as a plug-in with Lightroom and again if anyone knows why my preview in Photoshop CC is distorted uh, if you could email me at Tony at AnthonyMorganti.com and let me know what I'm doing wrong or if there's any fix for that I'd appreciate it and my Twitter is at Anthony Morganti and again I'd like to thank everyone who subscribed to my, um, my channel I really do appreciate it and if you didn't already I'd appreciate it if you did so in the next episode we'll use another uh, plug-in I think Nick or one of the other ones I have and uh, see what kind of job that does and we'll compare it to this one and uh, I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Take care.